What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with that today, uh, I would love to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all ladies doing today? Hi, Chief. Hi, Chief. Doing good. How are you? Oh, man. Y'all ready to chat? Chat it up today? Yes. We are. Awesome. Awesome. So ready. Okay. So today we have an outstanding guest uh, with decades of serving this great nation and honoring the men and women who have put on the uniform for a cause greater than themselves. Uh, without further ado, Julie, do you mind introducing today's guest? We, Chief, we are thrilled and honored to have our guest with us today. He has a rich legacy of service, a 35-year Army veteran who now serves our nation as the Director of the United States of America Vietnam War Commemoration. Please help me welcome retired U.S. Army Major General Pete Aylward. Hey, how you doing, sir? <laughs> sir, um, sir, so sir, sir. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> thanks, Julie. Thanks, Leah. It really is wonderful to join you today. Special thanks to Tom Schultz, Sandy Luke, Judd Anstey, and the entire APS team. You guys have been terrific partners, and what you do every day for all our veterans and their families is deeply appreciated. So thanks for having me on today. Oh, man, they're going to love those shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just earned me a raise. Thank you. <laughs> no, awesome. you they've been, they've been uh, just awesome uh, supporting what we need to do. And without your help, uh, you've got global reach. Uh, we wouldn't be able to reach all the hard to reach uh, and sometimes physically unable uh, veterans that we really need to get to in the neighborhoods where they live. So what you do is truly appreciated. General Elward, thank you so much uh, for joining us and taking time out. We're honored to have you here, like Julie said. And just wanted to say to everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions for General Elward, we'll be reading those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, well, you should because we have Chief Chats lined up every Tuesday and Thursday. So you'll know who's coming up next. Awesome, awesome. So uh, Major General Elward, man, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's great to have you with us. Uh, can you tell us where you're calling us from today and uh, how you've been holding up during the pandemic? Yeah, hey, thanks again, Chief. Uh, our Department of Defense office is located in Arlington, Virginia. And so through the miracle of technology, we're able to pair together with you today, even though we are physically separated by almost half a continent. The COVID-19 has presented a historic challenge for the entire world and the health and safety of our Vietnam veterans and their families and all our Americans is of paramount importance. And so these past six months have been quite a journey for us and our commemorative partners for which APS is one and we thank you again. Uh, we've been challenged to explore unique, even virtual ways of doing business to make sure that we keep everyone safe. Unfortunately, many thousands of our planned events have had to be canceled or postponed until next year. Uh, well, yeah, it, it's been it's been uh, it's been tough on us as well. So yeah, we we uh we we've been learning how to use Zoom and Teams and all these different uh, platforms to, to 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 handle business. So uh, we we totally understand uh, where you're coming from on that one. Yes, sir, and. Before we get into your current role at the Vietnam War commemoration, we would love to start off by hearing about your military career. So how did your time in the Army inform your approach to your work to date? So I enlisted in 1976 and worked my way up through the ranks. I was privileged to be able to stand on the shoulders of World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam veterans. They taught me about leadership, about devotion to duty, selfless service, moral courage, and more importantly, they taught me about taking care of our nation's blood and treasure, the sons and daughters of mom and dad. They taught me kindness, compassion, empathy, and tough love. I was extremely fortunate to be taken under their wing. It has shaped who I am today and why I will continue to thank and honor and help our veterans. That's great, sir. And clearly you're continuing taking care of our treasures 
in your new role or in your current role uh, with the commemoration and you've been there since 2012. You were recently appointed director, I believe last month. So we, we would love to hear more about the commemoration and the important work your team does to honor Vietnam veterans. So could you please tell us about how the commemoration began and what its objectives are and why it is so critical to give these previously unsung patriots and their families the thanks and honor they so richly deserve? Yeah, thanks for that question, Julie. This national commemoration was authorized by Congress, established under the Secretary of Defense and launched by the president in 2012. The inaugural ceremony was held at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial before military and political leaders, national media, and most importantly, thousands of Vietnam veterans and their families. They are our true VIPs. So Congress penned us five objectives in law. The first one, the primary objective, is to thank and honor our Vietnam veterans and their families with distinct recognition of former POWs and the 1,586 families who still wait accounting for their missing Vietnam veterans. Our second objective was to highlight the service of our armed forces and support organizations during the war. Our third objective was to pay tribute to wartime contributions at home by American citizens. Our fourth objective was to highlight technology, science, and medical advances made during that war. And our fifth and final objective was to recognize the contributions and sacrifices of our allies, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, Republic of Korea, and Thailand. So the men and women who served during this turbulent time in the nation's history should have been welcomed home more than 50 years ago. We owe our gratitude and thanks to everyone who served on, in uniform on active duty throughout the period of Vietnam War, regardless of where they served. And it is our privilege to carry on this noble mission. Awesome. So yeah, for me personally, I just want to personally thank the, the, the Vietnam. If we got any viewers or anybody watching right now, uh, just want to personally thank uh, them for uh, their service and their, their dedication to duty. And, and they kind of paved the way for, for people like me to, to wear the uniform. So uh, I want to personally thank all the Vietnam veterans out there. Um, so since the commemoration stood up, how many veterans have been publicly thanked for their service? And how many more do we need to reach? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I want to join you uh, for all our Vietnam veterans and the families that are out there. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your service and welcome home. Since 2012, more than 12,000 organizations have partners with us, hosting approximately 19,000 events that have publicly and individually thanked and honored more than 3 million Vietnam veterans and the families. Wow. But we still have a lot to do. The Vietnam uh, Veterans Affairs estimated more than 9 million men and women served on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces during the Vietnam War period. The VA also estimates about 6.2 million Vietnam veterans are living today in America and abroad. So there are approximately 3.2 million who remain to be honored in the neighborhoods where they live. And that's why it's so important that you, APHES, and all the exchanges partner with us. We want to thank them in the neighborhoods where they live. That's awesome. Awesome. So yeah, we, um, you know, for our audience out there, if you, if you know, if you see somebody wearing a, a Vietnam a war veteran hat, man, just thank them for their service. I think that's, that's, that's noble. And that's a honorable way, uh, way of, uh, you know, just showing your appreciation. All right, chief. So if you're just now joining us today, we are speaking with the director of the United States of America Vietnam War Commemoration, retired U.S. Army Major General Pete Elward. Sir, since 2017, March 29 has been recognized as National Vietnam War Veterans Day. How does the commemoration typically honor Vietnam veterans on this day? So thanks, Leah. It's critical to realize that that was an inspirational de decision to set up in law the day designated to honor the service and sacrifice of our Vietnam veterans. This day will long outlast our commemoration. And our hope, our vision is that soon this special day will be embedded in the fabric of our society and revered just like Memorial Day, Independence Day, mm -hmm. and Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. 
And so over the first three iterations, we've witnessed March 29th go into a lightning rod of sorts, a day that eventually attracted thousands of commemorative events across the nation in the span of a, surrounding the week that March 29th falls on. But this year, due to COVID-19, we watched as those same now annual events were postponed. Yet in the span of the six days, uh, Vietnam recognition turned into a virtual recognition where we had more than 717,000 screen views. But we still haven't wow. typically defined what Vietnam March 29th uh, actually looks like. And that's where we need the folks that are joined with us today to help determine what really works, especially during this period of, of the pandemic influenza. So thanks for the question. Awesome, yes, man. Sir. So the commemoration thanks and honors all the U.S. veterans who have served on active duty at any time during the period of 1 November 1955 to 15 May 1975, regardless of service. So why these dates and why, why so inclusive? Yeah, Chief, that's, that's another great question. And the answer is very clear. November 1st, 1955 was selected to, consult, to coincide with the official designation of the Military Assistant Advisory Group Vietnam or MACV, while May 15, 1975 marks the end of the battle precipitated by the seizure of the SS Marguerite. And the names of the service members lost in that battle are listed on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial here in Washington, DC. And so your question, why so inclusive? During the two decades of Vietnam War, our society became fractured. And later, in country, in theater, and other designations further split even those who wore the uniform of this great nation. So we determined at the outset of the commemoration that no distinction should be made between veterans who served in country, in theater, or who were stationed elsewhere during the Vietnam War period. All were called to serve. None, should, none could self-determine where they were actually gonna be stationed and all were seen in the same way by our country. It could not separate the war from the warrior. So each person who served during this period, earned and rightly deserved our profound thanks and gratitude. Absolutely. That, that to me, that just sounds like the right thing to do. So uh, thank y'all for doing that. Absolutely. Your commitment to thanking and honoring millions of Americans and their sacrifices, that's unrivaled. And it's amazing to be a part of it. We are honored to partner with you in this. So to that end, tell us about the lapel pins and the certificates that the commemoration offers. Why are these small tokens of gratitude so important? So in, in, 19, uh, in 2015, the commemorative official officially released the Vietnam lapel pin with the intent of having our commemorative partners publicly present one to each veteran living in America and abroad who served during the Vietnam period. This lapel pin is beautifully struck and features an eagle's head representing courage, honor, and dedicated service, stripes representing our nation's flag, and six stars representing the allies who served, sacrificed, and fought along one another, all encircled by a ring of blue matching the canton of our national flag and signifying vigilance, perseverance, and justice. The phrase, a grateful nation thanks and honors you, is embossed on the reverse side along with the commemoration's name. It is so gratifying that this lapel pin has become sought after by Vietnam veterans and is proudly worn as a lasting memento of our nation's gratitude. We have also designated four additional lapel pins with accompanying certificates of distinction that honor our former POWs of the Vietnam War the families of those who lost the Vietnam veteran during the war, the families of those who still wait news of the Vietnam veterans accounting, and the spouses of Vietnam veterans who returned from the war but are now lost to us. Oh man, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so we, we kind of touched on COVID-19 already uh, and how it impacted uh, a few things. Uh, how, how has your, your mission kind of changed or, or pivoted to, to account for this pandemic and, and all the stuff that kind of we have to go through? Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned earlier at the outset, COVID has, has, has really restricted our activity, but our team quickly pivoted and created a remarkable, successful 
virtual Na National Vietnam War Veterans Day. At this, as, as time has passed and social distancing continued, our commemorative partners began to invent new ways and safe ways to thank and honor our veterans and the family. In the place of honor fights, we began to see honor parades at Vietnam veterans' homes. In the place of handshakes and pinnings, we saw small groups with individually appropriated mark and masked and social distance gathered outside the windows of nursing homes and long-term care facilities wow. to thank and honor those who are inside who were presented materials by the nursing staff and doctors. The list was incredible. It was inventive, creative means of carrying out this noble mission onward and grow substantially, but we expect to continue to do as we look forward to today when once again, we can hug and offer handshakes to one another. Mm -hmm. Man, that's awesome. So it sounds like you guys are just hell bent on making sure that everybody gets thanked <laughs> in some way, mm -hmm. form or fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so glad to hear that these things are still happening even with COVID-19. And General Elward, the exchange, we've been honored to partner with the commemoration for several years. We've held lapel pinning ceremonies at our store stores worldwide on National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Uh, last year, I had the honor to attend the Fort Jackson pinning ceremony. Um, incredibly moving. Um, incredibly moving if you haven't haven't ever seen one. I've also had the privilege to present pins um, to Vietnam veterans along the way. Um, actually, at a, I was having my oil changed and at the car dealership, <laughs> I saw a man with a Vietnam veteran hat and I asked him about his service and I asked him if he had received a pin. I was working that, that Saturday and I had my my work bag with me and so I happened to have a pin with me and I presented it to him so that has been an honor for me to be able to personally thank Vietnam veterans um, but what kind of feedback has your team received about the ceremonies? Yeah, no, Leah, yeah, your personal experience kind of describes what we all experience almost every day is the emotion associated with for the you know, for more than 50 years having never been thanked is to finally look them in the eye and tell them that they made a difference for us. They made a difference for our children. Mm -hmm. They made a difference for our children's children and their service was truly and deeply appreciated by a grateful nation. So the Army and Air Force Exchange has been nothing short of a spectacular. You guys have hosted more than 267 events since joining as a commemorative partner in 2014, reaching more than 56,000 Vietnam veterans and their families in the neighborhoods where they live. So well done. We still have more to do. Uh, every March 29th provides communities around the world the opportunity to find and honor these warriors in a way that they richly deserve. And, and you really are right. You know, the emotions run high during these ceremonies. Is, is quite often we see the veteran who's receiving the Pell Pen with tears in their eyes. But it, it really uh, represents kind of that, that affection that we have for them and the gratitude and thanks that a nation has. And so mm -hmm. there is no question that AFES has done a terrific job helping us hail America one veteran at a time. Thank awesome. you for we that. Were certain, oh, sorry, Julie. No, you go, go ahead, ahead, Leah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> We were so sad, and I know I speak for Julie too, we were so sad this year when we couldn't attend a pinning ceremony or host a pinning ceremony. Um, it, I was I was heartbroken, seriously. I was too. We, um, we look forward to these opportunities each year to work with your team and to honor this very, very special um, section of, of our population who, who really, gave um so so much and you are you're right sir the emotions that you see at these ceremonies that mm -hmm. spill over i've never seen anything like it and it really it has stuck with me and it's been such a privilege to be to work with your team to honor those who who weren't welcomed home properly and who should have been all along so it, it really has meant a, a lot for us to be able to work with y'all and I, and I can't wait to, to attend one myself because oh, I'm, I'm fairly new to this position. But yeah, we're looking forward to having you help us, Chief. Okay, and absolutely. 
Leah's right. Like she always has a little pin. She's more organized than I am. She has a, always has a pin in her bag. And she's, I mean, we've like, we've done these on the spot pinnings before too. It's absolutely fantastic. And she's, Leah is way, she's more observant than I am. She'll notice a hat or a patch or something that signals, hey, we think he might be a Vietnam veteran. Let's go, let's go ask. So um, also I wanted to um, take uh, some time to share, you know, information from the live feed. We have people watching from all over the world. My mother-in-law, I can see that she is watching. And uh, <laughs> my, my father-in-law, he's, he, he's a Vietnam era veteran. He did not uh, go to the war, but he served during that era. And I, I need to get him a lapel pin as well. But we have people watching from all over the world giving heart symbols, mm -hmm. giving likes and loves. And that's all a, you know, a testament to the great work you're doing. Well, thanks. And uh, so my recent experience was uh, in the uh, Safeway uh, shopping parking lot, the man that was gathering the shopping carts uh, was a Vietnam veteran and he hadn't received his lapel pin. And so like you, I had one in my briefcase and I went and got it from a truck and I looked him in the eye. I actually had a folder with some of our brochure that I gave him as well that explains the symbolism of the pin, which I think the veterans really appreciate. Uh, I also gave him a, a copy of uh, President Trump and Pro President Obama's uh, presidential proclamations. And it, it was really meaningful for him. He appreciated that I took the time in the parking lot of Safeway to stop and say, thank you for your service. And uh, that a nation uh, truly is grateful and thankful for uh, what he did so many years ago. Oh yeah, that's awesome, awesome. So um, for those that, people that don't know, um, your previous job or you were the previous director of the DOD Pandemic Influenza Task Force and also the DOD COVID-19 Pandemic Influenza Task Force. Yeah, yeah, Chief. Uh, so uh, back in 2005, I, I was uh, detailed to the Office of the Secretary of Defense as the DOD Director of the Pandemic Influenza Task Force. And when I left that job, I, I went to the Joint Staff, uh, J3, uh, where I continued uh, for three years as the Joint Staff Lead for Pandemic Influenza. And so when uh, this particular strain of virus uh, raised its head in January, a good friend of mine is the Secretary of Defense's lead uh, for, our, for our Department of Defense and for the country for pandemic influenza. And I told him, I said, hey, you know, if you need any help, uh, don't be like the Red Sox. Uh, you need to have a bench and you need to have a bullpen. I'm willing, I'm willing to come into the first inning and help you out. <laughs> and so um, I, I was able to go over to uh, the uh, FEMA National Response Coordination Center uh, in the middle of March uh, to help. Uh, th there's some great Americans working uh, incredible hours behind the scenes. And frankly, they don't get enough uh, credit themselves. Uh, they're, they're saving lives and they're making a huge difference uh, for our nation. And so it was a privilege to have to step up and, uh, and step in and, and help them out. And it, it, it was really uh, meaningful to me at the time uh, because we had had so many of our events canceled. And because our Vietnam veterans and their families, because of their age, represent that high risk category. And so I, 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 I wanted to still make a difference in their lives. And I, and I think that uh, collectively we were able to do some great things uh, that provided common sense, that provided a sense of urgency and it really made a difference. So thanks for asking about that, Chief. Awesome, awesome. And thank you for, for uh, st stepping up and, and, and you know, you, I don't know if you're the closer. You said you came in for the first in first couple of innings uh, mm -hmm. just to get, get them started. But <laughs> and, Yeah, and so I, I, I was there pretty much uh, from the middle of March uh, through the middle of June. Um, and we helped uh, do a good transition and handoff. And I reminded my friend, I'll actually stop by and see him tomorrow and remind him that, um, you know, we're probably in the sixth inning, a 21 inning ball game, and you still need to have a bench and you still need to have a pretty good bullpen. Uh, the, our challenge is, is that, you know, the 22nd of September, the first day of fall is the beginning of the flu season, right? And so we could have a one, two punch. Oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and so, you know, for all our teams, we, we need to be thinking about continuity of ops and, uh, and taking care of our families and making sure they're safe, taking care of our veterans and making sure they're safe and certainly taking care of our Vietnam veterans uh, because they're in that high risk category. Yes, sir. And, and, and it's funny you mentioned uh, Boston Red Sox because that, that New England accent was just, I, 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 I could mm -hmm. pick it up 
from your, your, uh, your I was going to tell you that I was uh, from Northern Texas, just by the way. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, sir, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure talking with you and hearing about what you guys are doing for Vietnam veterans. But before we say goodbye, can you remind us where can our viewers go to learn more about the commemoration? Is there a website or social me media channels and how can they get involved if they want to um, do something for Vietnam veterans? Yeah, Leah, hey, thanks. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. That is so important right now uh, in this COVID environment. So everyone, you can visit our website at vietnamwar50th.com to learn more about our national commemoration as well as how you can help us thank and honor our veterans in your local uh, neighborhood. Uh, we're, we're having a special emphasis this year on our hard to reach veterans. It may be in nursing homes, soldiers homes or assisted living facilities. Those that are physically unable to attend events. Uh, it's a challenge right now, but we need your help with that one. So please like, follow, tag, share us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Just search for Vietnam War 50th or Vietnam War Commemoration, and you'll find some great stuff we have out there on our website. So thanks for asking that question. Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. So, sir, thank you again for taking some time to chat with us. Um, you, you provided so much valuable information to our, our community, uh, and and I, I'm excited. I, I, I'm ready to see somebody with a hat uh, I don't have a lapel pin, but I got I gotta get with Leah to to get organized to, to get have you one. one. <laughs> we will we will hook, we'll you, hook up, you up, Chief. Chief. We will yeah. hook you up, Chief. Awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll hook you up, Chief. If they don't have any, we'll make sure you got some. <laughs> all right, sir. So, uh, like I said, thank you uh, and the commemoration for all that you do to honor our Vietnam veterans. It's truly been an honor having you with us today. This means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coasties. Um, we wish you all the best, and thank you. Uh, thank you for taking care of our faithfully, uh, our, our service members who faithfully serve this country. Yeah, hey, thanks, Chief, for having me on and for this wonderful opportunity. Again, I want to call out uh, Tom Schull, uh, Sandy Luke, <laughs> and John Anstey, and, and your entire corporate team and the team across the globe that you have. You guys have led the way with the exchanges and the commissary. And what you do is really important because we're benchmarking uh, what you've done with video, with the social media, and what you're physically doing with the individual events to help share that with the rest of our partners because we want them to know what right looks like. <laughs> what you guys do is what right looks like. So thanks for having me on today. Thanks for who you are. Thanks for what you do. And for all our Vietnam veterans out there again and their families, thank you. You made a huge difference in my life and the lives of all the folks in the room sitting around here with me. And what you did is truly appreciative and a grateful nation. Thanks and honors you. Have a wonderful day. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, sir. Yay. Thank you for that close. Thank you. Good close. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, sir, if you, you don't mind uh, sticking around, I, I, I want to get some information from you so I can uh, give you a token of my appreciation. All right. Thanks, Chief. All right. Thanks. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.